Welcome to another scope test repair and teardown video. <laughs> I'm saying repair because the guy that gave me this one said it actually worked when he put it uh, in his shit for a long time ago, but when he wanted to give it to me, he tested it again and it didn't power up. So it's uh, considered broken. Then he didn't do any more than that. So this is a Attila equipment. Uh, D52, so it's a dual channel, and it should be from 1969. And uh, yeah, well, what else uh, did I look up? Uh, 11 kilo, so it's actually quite heavy, and it is 90 watts. This is very useful information. Uh, we got 14 tubes and five transistors in this one. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, actually, I'm um, looking for the... Oh, okay, here it is. The power. Is it that one? Or is it... Okay, it's that one. So so this is the brightness or something? Or the focus? Okay, this is the... So we start with power off. Normal, what not here. Ooh, this... Trick level and stability. I love these kind of funny things. Have you ever seen this lower trace, upper trace? So is there a... Oh, this one is going all the way around, right? Well, I'll try and... Power it on and see what happens. Everything here is a little bit crusty. Oy, oy, oy. It's a very different feel. Anyway, yeah, we definitely need to see if this one takes the fuses. Oh, yeah. So, this is the back side. This one got modulation for brightness on the back. So, this is. Uh, Pretty cool. I like this uh, voltage selector. And the fuse is not blown, I guess. I'm definitely going to put in... I will First I will test resistance to, uh, to chassis from this. And then I will use this one as my grounding. Because I'm not going to get electrocuted. So, we are ready. This one was in off. Let's power on mains and nothing bad happens. Okay, there's no current consumption at all. And the fuse was not broken. Hey, uh, so I need to see what is wrong. So it was exactly as I expected. Take off the handle, take off the two small screws down here, and then just push the unit out. Wow, that is really a very big tube. See, this is the screen on the front. And look how big the tube really is. So what we see here is like <laughs> half of the screen. Oh, wow. <laughs> There's a, rare, a really special smell. <coughs> I think I need to open the window a little bit. I think. Also, I want to give this a lot of compressed air and clean it up a little bit. Let's see. And what is that? I think we got some capacitor puke or some other liquids spill here this could be the explanation of this not working and this capacitor looked looks a bit leaked but of course it's not powering up at all so first i want to measure if there's any voltages anywhere i know there is not because i look at the current consumption and i don't see a milliamp going anywhere so that means it's quite easy we don't get voltage 
into anything at all. But first I like to inspect. Ooh, this is heavy. Yeah, inspect everything carefully for individuals. See there, they added the transistors from the bottom so they're easier to access. Pretty cool, and all the adjustments around them. Attenuators. This one is six megahertz capable, so that is why we have all these. They did a lot more here compared to the slower version. I already did have a look at. Got some rectifier diodes, voltages, filter resistors, and stuff, and another little transistor down there. So this will be the time base, timing components. Yeah, definitely need to clean a little bit, but that is quite easy. And then it's gonna look nice and beautiful again. Of course, when we heat up these tubes full of dust, they, they don't really smell so good. And also, if this is kind of burned into the, yes, it is. Then we need to wash it a little bit more. But then it can work real nice again. I am a little bit... what is that? Neon bulbs or regulator, voltage regulation or something? That is something we need to look at. But anyway, cleanup time. After a little bit of compressed air cleanup here, it is now much better to work around with everything here and this is the main switch that I'm turning on and off and it took me a few seconds to figure this out because they choose to do it a little bit different with the wire colors those two are actually mains input and this will be the transformator windings and this one actually does connect to that one when I turn it on, but this one don't connect to that one when I turn it on. So that is the problem. So what I'm going to do just to trick this, I'm just going to connect these two together and that just use the switch for one of them. Just to see if it's all right so far. So that is the fix for now. I don't think it's easy to find a new uh, replacement of this uh, rotary uh, on-off switch. So I think we have to live with this for now. So it goes on, but it consumes 120 watts instead of 90 watts. And what I have looked at, we got light in all the bulbs. Alrighty then. Let's look at the other side. Again, all the filaments, they light up. And look up here. That will be the two voltage regulator neons. One is not lit. That is something we need to look into. Time for a little coffee break. So this is my own little high voltage probe. So this is a 100 to 1. So that means I got one kilovolt per division. So now I can see whatever I want without risking blowing up stuff. I've been measuring uh, a lot of the test point voltages. I also see some test point voltages around here. I am missing minus 12 volts and minus 15. That's zero volts that I measure. I got the minus 960. Uh, for a lot of the cathode st stuff, but for the anode stuff, here is the test point for a 2.6, and on this point I measure only 300 volts. So that is interesting, and if we uh, look at the schematic uh, for a few seconds, we'll see the 2.6 volts is made from a, a voltage doppler, um, and the voltage doppler is connected to 300 volts. So that means I have a diode that is a short circuit or the capacitor is or something like that. So there's definitely only a few components to look at 
to find out this bug. And the, the minus 12 volts is also a very, very simple circuit with a, a transistor and, uh, and such. So this I need to look into. That was really easy. Now I've removed the voltage doubler capacitor. So this is connected to 1100 volts AC on one side through this diode. And this diode is connected to plus 300 volts. And of course also this point of the main capacitor for the high voltage is also plus 300 here. So it charges this capacitor every time it goes negative and then when it goes positive it goes back through the other diode, the very very big one. Let me turn this the big one down here to the left and then it charges the capacitor. And then we only see 300 volts on this one. And of course we do that because there's no capacitor left in this one. It's just a big empty can. So let's see if I can find another one and put in instead. Oh man, I've been poking around with this for a few minutes and it seems like both of those diodes are actually shorted. So now I just cut them out. And they're of course quite hot. Hmm, that is weird. Because now I've got a capacitor here that's working. So when the high voltage comes comes here and the 300 volts is there, and this is nice and stable, then there's a lot of current that goes over crazy here in this uh, rectifier. And it's actually the same with the other one here. And this one is longer, I guess. No, no, they're not there the same. So since they don't work anyway, we might as well see what is inside. So I believe this is high voltage selenium. And here's how you open them. They stick through a little piece of plastic and then they kind of melted it. So this is how they close them. Oh, there's a little spring. And this will give us access to a whole pile of what is that? I was expecting... Okay, that is just some pieces of metal in a spring. Weird. Come on, man. Oh, they were supposed to come out. So let's have a look in the other end. How easy is this thing? Oh, come on, man. No, okay. Hey, hang on a second. Okay, we are out. And then this part again is the same. Oh, come on. I don't have all day for this shit. Ah, oh, there's a perfect reason for why they can't get out. Because they welded themselves to the case. I don't know if this is easy to see. I got C. They kind of exploded out to the sides and welded themselves together. And this is definitely not how it's supposed to look. Because when the first few blow up due to uh, too much reverse voltage, then the next one and the next one and the next one gets more and more and more, right? And then they just blow up and melt. I can actually see some melt, melted explosions or something like that here, right? See? So those kind of spark through or melting material kind of welded all these little selenium rectifier pieces to the inside here so it's impossible to get them out let's see if the other one is uh, 
exactly the same because if it is not then it should be fairly easy just to pull out everything see like that and then yeah okay I think it is normal they stick a little bit see this is how nice they should kind of work and, and look so yeah maybe this one is not that broken but the other one surely is so I'm just gonna throw this out I just wanted you guys to see what this stuff is made of here we go I think this uh, was actually a quite easy fix do you recognize those um, diodes those are microwave oven diodes. They're very good for 12 kilovolts and quite a lot of current. So you better save them, test them and reuse them. Pretty cool. So <laughs> I'm going to try to see if this works or if it blows up. Uh, let's put this up like this. And let me connect my high voltage probe here and let's be careful not to touch anything bad let's just crank up everything and let's see how much we're gonna go and blow up oh we got a lot of voltage holy shit we got three kilovolts so that means we should be able to get a picture on this damn thing right So where's the focus and brightness and shit? Why isn't there any picture here? Maybe it has something to do with the trigger and the thing here, right? Hey man, come on, it was not supposed to be that difficult. No, I kind of wasted a half a day on this shit. Ay, man. And what do you know? Of course it works. Yeah. One channel and the other channel. Isn't that really cool? So there's something with the trigger here. Was it this one? Yeah. Ah, uh -huh. so this is the trigger. And this is the position. And this is the gain. So you can zoom in and out. Yeah. I think it actually works now. <laughs> I'll try and input some signals and let's play a little bit more. Ooh, there's some. Okay, this pot here is a little bit. Or is it AC or DC here? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe the. All right. So I would call it a success so far. Of course, you need to poke a little bit with all the. With all the switches and stuff there. I guess this is XY mode or off or what is this variable thing? No, it's a calibration. I don't know what that is. But yeah, it's definitely working. And we got 3,000 volts on the anode. <laughs> a little bit high, but anyway, it kind of works. Yeah, I'm quite happy about this. It actually really works. Still a little bit with the inputs here. It's a little bit funny. I don't know if this is... One of them here is... Yeah, it's this one. That's quite jumpy. And also the brightness is quite bright. Focus seems to affect a little bit on the picture. See? Ooh. I think it is this one, yeah? Yeah. But anyway, this, this thing is, what, more than 50 years old? So what do you expect? This is actually a 5 megahertz uh, signal. 
and I'm playing a little bit with the zoom fixture uh, or the game yeah see so you can move it here and then you can kind of gain it and there is a little bit of yeah, okay now it's nice and stable but you need to play a little bit with the trigger stability but it's actually working anyway I think I'm done playing with this funny old scope 